today. I'm in Sarasota's classic car museum. It's brilliant. I can't, honestly, you can see my face. As soon as I walked in here, I was like, okay, wow. A lot of historical artifacts here, a lot of cool cars, a lot of classics. But I'm going to get Martin to show us around and see what else he can tell us. So you all know where to come when you're searching for classic cars. Just to visit, just to walk around, to check it out. Or maybe you want to buy something. <laughs> but here's Martin. How's it going? Oh, it's wonderful. So glad you came in, Rana. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. I love the setup. I love everything that is here from the chandeliers. You've really got it down pat. Yeah, it was meant to be... Uh, the whole theme was taken from a, a, a stable, a barn. Okay. With a sort of rustic wooden ceiling and basically turned into, through time, through a, a collectible car barn. So we have all the beam ceilings and all the wood. We have river rock on the floor, which is pretty good for soaking up the occasional incontinent spill that the cars sometimes have. <laughs> so, the, oh, uh, it's it's awesome, and I can really see that you've definitely given it that classic look for somebody who wants to keep a collection of beloved classics. Now, you've how long have you had this for? I am the third caretaker. The place opened in March of 1953. Wow. So. We're now in February of 19, or sorry, 2023. So we're almost at 70 years next month. We'll be wow. celebrating 70 years. I took over in 1997. So we've been here 25 years. Now what I'm wondering is 1953, was it a classic car museum? It was opened as a classic car museum. Okay. So it's a purpose-built building structure on US 41 in Sarasota, Florida, which was the busiest road which is still fairly busy. With still about busy. 60, it's Florida, cars. everything's <laughs> busy. <laughs> Everything is busy in Florida, particularly in the winter. Yes. So, yes, yes. <laughs> the building is by design a car museum. Wow. So we've been here at the same place for 70 years. 70 years, continuously operated. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. We're kind of proud of it. You should be. You <laughs> should be. Okay. I mean, I want to look at everything. Where should we go? Where should we go? Well, we have a Porsche exhibit right now. Okay, let's go and have a look. Which is quite interesting. We have some early Porsches. Two 51s, three 56. What's the oldest car you've got? Oh, the oldest car we've got is probably, hmm, I think we have a 1905 uh, Maxwell delivery wagon. We're definitely going to come back to that. We can go back to the delivery wagon. They weren't yes. delivering much. Look at the size of it. Yeah, I know, but still, it's from 1905. Yeah, I know, it's incredible. <laughs> These were, I think, the second or second, maybe into the third year of production for Ferdinand Porsche's wow. Porsche business. Um, obviously, he gave us the Volkswagen as well, and you see the same theme running through it. Although these early cars, pre-356 cars, these split window cars, were a lot more luxurious than some of the later cars. You see, they got, the convertible's got leather interior, it's got wood panel door caps, it's got a real convertible top with a headliner and padding. Wow. Full instrumentation. Well, they were ahead, weren't they? They were, and, and they became a little more austere. Maybe to keep costs down, I'm not certain it would make sense. And the, um, there's a gathering of them that spread around a little bit. One of the most popular cars is this 1977. Okay, what makes it so popular? Liter. Well, a Porsche turbo has always been popular. Oh, it's they a turbo. They stuffed that turbo motor in the back of it, flared out the wheel arches. This particular car has got slightly less than 10,000 miles on it. It's not for sale, as we're asked daily. Wow, uh, less than 10,000 miles Porsche. Yes, original. It has original paint, original interior. Seats look like no one's ever sat in them. And it's a rare color. I think they call it metallic cocoa, but I could be proven wrong on that subject. Wow. But it's a metallic brownish. Uh, in such good condition, Martin, how did you come across this? Uh, these cars, it's a collaboration between a Porsche collector okay. who wanted to show off his cars but didn't want to deal with the daily. Fair enough. Whatever it is <laughs> that we deal with. So, uh, it started about the time COVID began, so we sort of lost out for the better part of the year or so. Yes. Everybody lost out at that point, so. But we carried it on, and it's been very well received. 
It has been. I mean, uh, before I was looking at you selling classics as well, some beautiful classics. We'll definitely um, take you guys for a walk there as well. But this is not for sale, even though so many people are asking about it. It's not for sale. Never. No, it's, well, never say never, but no, it's not for sale. It's NFS. Okay. Not for sale. Not for sale. So most of the cars in this museum are NFS. <laughs> well, I do love the fact that in such good nick, with absolutely original, less than 10,000 miles, and it's a Porsche Turbo. 77. What? No, Turbo wasn't that popular with the Porsches at that time. It was the beginning. They came out in late 75, and I think 76 in the States. So it was the begin of, beginning of something where 911s now all have turbos yes. in them. So it was 45 years ago, but it's grown into something that's daily production for Porsches. A lot now of these cars is, yeah. have barely any miles. I mean, that was low mileage. This one's got 714 miles. 714, it's a, 85. Uh, it's 85. And a half Porsche or half Porsche? Is it 1985 and a half or is it a half Porsche? <laughs> oh, it's an 85 and a half. I think they changed the front bumper and they offered the telephone dial wheels. Uh, basically the same car from beginning to end. There might be something else that I'm forgetting, but uh, telephone dial original wheels. Car, original colors, original paint. It's then amazing that people can keep cars in such good condition. I know. Amazing. You know, generally, a, a car that age is going to have 150,000 miles on it. 100 percent. And we have some American cars. We got to intersperse things around. Sometimes the displays get a little broken around, but I think not everybody wants to see a whole row of Porsches, where other people might want to see nothing but Porsches. Well, I want to see American cars. Well, that's an American <laughs> car. That's a 63 Lincoln, the black car, yeah. four-door continental convertible. We were the fortunate recipients of a donation from a couple who owned the car 42 years. Oh, wow. We've since brought it up mechanically and getting ready to do some chrome work on it, but as it is, it's a car people recognize and enjoy. And this is a 1959 Cadillac Fleetwood, the big car with their production run, known as the King of the Fins. The luxurious family cars. With the time. Fins. With Fins. <laughs> Gotta love Fins. I do love Fins. <laughs> That's another low mileage Porsche. Broncos are quite popular. You see the green block Bronco in the corner, sort of back there because it's got height to it and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's a 76 with original paint, original interior. It's just a lovely stock example. Yes, the two tone colors. It's nice. People tend to modify those greatly with. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an original. Just got to go to a truck show to see that. And You've got an SRT. Exactly. Mm. I do like Dodge. This is Challenger. Beautiful. So 2015, you don't have a, um, a cutoff year for the cars that you'll take in? No, they have to be interesting. We prefer earlier cars. I mean, this is an interesting piece of modern American engineering. It's got 707 horsepower. 100%. It's just an amazing machine. And you know, they become quite valuable. They were instantly collectible. Um, the car next to it is a it's a real Shelby Cobra. Oh, a nice. Completion car. They built seven of those in 1991. And then had a new 427 in it at that time. I think anything that Shelby touched was just amazing. Look at this. There was only one of seven. It makes all the right sounds. I bet it does. <laughs> Hellcat is brilliant. We all know that, you know, I like my charger, so. We have a low production Alpha Zagato. It's 1991 SZ Zagato. Zagato, the famous Italian coach builders who were still in business. Um, had a composite body, quick little car. That was one of, I think, 17 with a three and a half liter motor in it. So, you know, Alpha always had a nice suspension. Yes. They're always quick. They always cornered well. Yes, they always do very, corner well. Very competitive cars, and it's an uh, interesting design. They would make them quick and swift. 
It's a nice looking one. That's a 355 Ferrari F355 Spider Fiorano, a low production car, but it's the only one in that silver blue that was made. And these are a couple of American purpose built <laughs> Ford race cars. <laughs> Ford built. Gotta love the fair lines. Yeah, the Thunderbolt. It was a lightweight car with plexiglass windows and fiberglass bumper, and they stuffed a 427 motor in it and sold it only to competent racers. Basically, did that racers. well. The yes. 427 did it really well. Exactly. Love classic Buicks, just the way they look, the whole body line. I've always said it just screams luxury. It's America in the 50s. All that chrome and the great colors and the two-tone paint. Mm -hmm, yep. Chrome wire wheels as well. It's right up there for me. I mean, I'm a big fan of the Bel Air, the 57 Bel Air, in fact, but this is right up there as well. It is. Both iconic, aren't they? Mm-hmm. The Mercedes is a more modern collectible, instantly collectible. It's an SLS AMG model. First car exclusively designed by AMG for production. But it has 576 horsepower motor. It's this was the first car? It's the first car that AMG designed and built front to back when they were purchased by uh, Mercedes-Benz. It's become quite collectible. It has opening gull wing doors. A lot of horsepower without the benefit of any turbochargers, so it's naturally aspirated. So we've got an English antique here. We do. It's a little Austin Brooklyn's race car, a little aluminum body car with a little four cylinder motor, lightweight as can be. Of course. Large people need not apply. <laughs> But it was meant to. It was meant to continually drive. As a matter of fact, it doesn't have a fan. It doesn't have a fan at all. No, not at all. So we're not stopping and parking with this car. It was meant to race, and that was it. One that was single it. purpose. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this looks very. This looks familiar because I was um. If you guys saw, I was at the Jeff Lane Museum, Lane Motor Museum in Nashville, and they had something similar. Well, not exactly this, but it was similar. Yeah, I think it has a Norris. Um, yeah. Streamliner is what the cars were called. Okay. So, obviously, for the, the design of the car, it's when it was discovered that a, a shape of this type would be more economical and, and less drag. And all aluminium? So, all aluminium. It's uh, built on a Ford chassis, a 1934 Ford. It's built in 1937 by a gentleman named Gujan in Bay City, Michigan. And he actually used the car. He switched the motor from the traditional front mounting to a rear mounting and added Wow, the that's the motor the right there. We can see it. There it is in the back. The, the interior upholstery has been removed, sort of in preparation for restoration. It wasn't meant to be in bare metal. I would leave it exposed. Would you? Okay. I would just leave it exposed so I. <laughs> so as you drive and you can just hear that beautiful sound and just feel the rumble of it. I would leave it as it is. But you know they love doing this. The whole aluminium bodies and making it look futuristic. At that time. Yeah, Buckminster Fuller, the famous designer, designed one as well. I think there was a copy of that in the uh, Ford Museum in Dearborn. And that's French. Of course, we're looking at the Hadoujabo 2CV, the blue car, but the black and silver car is uh, a Dele. Oh, Dele. So it looks very much like a 34 Ford with a yes, it does. grill. It's got a four-cylinder motor, it's very peppy, and that car always starts. It's very attractive with the low roof. Definitely looks like the 34 Ford. 
except this came out about like decades after that. It's a 59. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, every museum needs a beetle. <laughs> 66 model. It's brilliant. I mean, some of the things that the people are doing with the beetles these days, turning it into hot rods. <laughs> That's kind of been done with this particular car. It doesn't look like it. It looks stock. It has stock bumpers, it has stock tires, stock look. You can still see the Carmen coach builder tag yeah. on the side but it's got a 100 110 horsepower motor in the back oh so that's it'll, a lot it'll, it'll get out of its own way yep so it has been hot rodded to an extent to an extent <laughs> but you don't see it visually now moving forward we're getting a little bit more into history now which always excites me let's have a look Willie's Jeep. Willie's Jeep, 1944. A true World War II Jeep, a local fellow from Sarasota, Florida, purchased it in Belgium. And as we know, at the end of World War II, the Battle of the Bulge was held all through Belgium in the winter months. And yep. it, it was damaged when he purchased it. He brought it back to Florida and restored the whole thing. He had interest in it because it had all the equipment. It's got the trailer. Oh wow, that's true. They detuned the 50 caliber, so it's non-functional. Okay. Keep our friends at ATF away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. But you couldn't use that if, if your life depended on it. But it has the look. But it has the look. 100%. And the car next to it is a lovely, lovely example of a MGTF. Um, it's a 1500. And owned by a fellow who now lives here locally, Brian Johnson, the lead singer of ACDC, who is a bona fide car guy. Okay. And it's just a beautiful example. He has several, several cars, the only one on display here. But we look at them for him. So he just leaves it here for you guys as, um, to look after, or he's given it to you? No, he still owns a car. We just, we just look after it. You look after it. And these cars are from the Ringling household, the circus people, John and Mabel Ringling, this we're getting ready to do work on that. It's been stripped down a bit. It's a 1923 Pierce Arrow. And John Ringling's wife, Mabel, who was a strong independent person, was known to drive around Sarasota almost 100 years ago exactly in this car without the benefit of the chauffeur. So she was a strong woman driving a powerful car. Um, this was so the Ringling cool. Museum is also here, everybody. As a matter of fact, I've actually been there and um, I vlogged it as well. <laughs> I haven't put it up on the channel yet. This is like the time I was telling you guys about the Aviation Museum I've been to and I haven't put that video up as well because last, um, the year before last in 21, the three months, I just spent it in Florida and um, mainly over here, of course, and I did the uh, John Ringling Museum. Did you? Yes. So yes. you know a bit of the Ringling history. A little bit, yes. I mean, I've just come off my flight. When we were talking about it before, I'm just... <laughs> but yes, I have been there and um, see what happens. I mean, if people like it, then I might be able to put some more of my travels on the um, channel. But yeah, that's a bit more on my channel. <laughs> yeah. So it all ties together. So it all ties together. So if somebody wants to visit Sarasota, we have the Ringling Complex across the street, which is 66 acres with a beautiful art museum in it, yep. and uh, mostly European art, 1500, 1600s. You can't miss it, it's a beautiful building, like the mansion is just, it's amazing. Yes, it's, uh, right. and the house is a Palazzo, 25,000 feet on Sarasota Bay. Uh, I went inside it as well, you can't film inside the house, you know, it's all coming back to me. There you go, <laughs> it's a beautiful place. I'm due for a coffee, but anyway, yeah. hey, you guys, Look at this, this is just amazing, okay? You know I love the antiques. You know I love antique cars. I love Model T's, Model A's. This is just brilliant, everything, but we have a beautiful replica here. Tell us, Martin, what are we looking at? Uh, it's an uh, exacting replica of Abraham Lincoln's funeral purse, which was used in Springfield, Illinois, which was his official hometown, his birthplace. So it was used to 
carry his remains after taking a 14-day trip from Washington after he was assassinated to where he was laid to rest in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, it was well known, and through time it, there have been photographs that have been shared, and it's, it was always known to be. It was burned in a fire mm -hmm. in a barn in 1893. So the History Channel came in one day to have a discussion with us about making a replica of something. Knowing we have a car museum with wheels, they mentioned it did not have a motor. It had a horse. It actually had a team, it had a pair of horses. So oh, wow. they built this exacting replica and kindly donated it to us. And uh, had an episode of their TV series based around it, so. Well, you guys did an amazing job because I want to show you all um, what the original would have looked like in this picture, and then I'll get some good footage of the replica down here by John's team, by Martin's team, sorry. Wow, you guys, this is amazing. As someone who is not American, I always appreciate American history. Well, Abraham Lincoln was by many considered to be America's best president three times, 200 and some years ago. Yes. So, we have that. I see plumes of feathers on top. It's absolutely beautiful. And then we get into the early Fords. The early Fords, they were not all black. No. no white I've actually... That's from 1912 and it's white and red. You guys haven't done it. That's actually how it was. Yeah, I mean, it's been restored. It's been restored. Time. So why was I told that they were all black or that was the only color available? I think for a period of time it was, unless you had a special order. I mean, they were built to be affordable. They actually put America on wheels, so... If, if you make them all black, you're speeding up the uh, assembly process, aren't you? That's true. But I think the earlier the car, the better chance you have a colored car. I had another 12 um, Roadster, very similar to this, and it was dark blue for me. Dark blue? Mm -hmm. It was lovely, actually. In the wow. Head. And I thought that the classics, the colors came in during the 50s and the 60s. That's when they took off, but wow. No, nope, they were available. There were a lot of very colorful cars in the States in the 30s, probably in Europe as well, I'm sure. Um, the car we're kind of glancing over to look at is, is a quite interesting car. It's a 1912 Roche and Lang electric car. It's an electric car from 1912. From 1912. Wow. And even more interesting, well, there's something very interesting about the fact that they were building electric cars and the people were buying electric cars. Yes. Obviously, they were for city use, for urban use. You wouldn't be going from farm to farm. You couldn't get that much distance out of No, it batteries. doesn't look like it was made for the farm. No. Not those leather seats. <laughs> but the same family has owned this car since 1912. Makes that 100. Wow. This, it's like, been in the same family for generations since 1912. Since the beginning. Life. Wow, I love that. Now, electric car in the 1912, how did it work? Well, it looks like there's a brake here. That is a brake, that's a tiller. They all had tillers. Every electric car I've seen has tillers. And What's they a also tiller? Have, um, it's like on, a, like on a boat. You, you steer. Oh, you steer through that? Through, through this. Of course, it's, it's, wow. it's sort of fixed, so it takes a little bit of power to do it when it's rolling, it moves easily. So, and electric cars, it seems almost every one of them has opposing seat facing instead of row seating behind the other. Wow. And it's my understanding that the ladies broke them because at that time there was no electric starter no. for, for, for a gas engine. You had no. to crank and crank. So that's what I'm wondering, like, how, is, how does this work? Um, well, you have a charger, as you have now at home, and you charge it, and I think you get 40 or 50 miles of use out of it. Batteries front, batteries rear. Okay. And, and the electric motor was running off the batteries. The concept of electric motors has been around for a very long time. You know, I only learned that recently, mm -hmm. that um, electric cars has been around. I mean, you think of it as such a modern day a phenomenon that's happening. And this one has unique features. The fender, if you're looking at 
when you first glance at them, it looks like the, the metal is misshaped, but it's actually, it's patent leather. Wow. It's pretty unique when you think of it. It's got a retractable carriage top, lined out top, it folds back. It's advanced for its time. Not to mention, I mean, back in those times, they were, I would have expected the, um, the lamps, the, the gasoline lamps. lamps. Which in this case are electric. They're actually electric lights. And you got <coughs> traditional, what are now traditional headlights, which in those days were not so traditional. No. Mm -mm. 1912 Victoria convertible. This is very unique for something from that time to have such modern features. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It is, isn't it? It's come back. It's come back through time. Every <laughs> museum has to have a wooden boat. You gotta have a wooden boat. What's the wooden boat you've got here? Oh, it's 1947 Century Sea Maid. With four place seating and the motor in the rear. It's got a V8 motor. Wow, that's a good looking boat. It's a lovely boat. Fresh restoration. I think it went in the water once and was parked here since. <laughs> You've been here in Sarasota. This would be popular for visitors. Oh, it looked great in Sarasota Bay or just <laughs> coming in shore off the waves. Look at those seats. This is just beautiful craftsmanship all over.